Let's explore this cool tetrahedron problem. Let ABCD be a tetrahedron. So we have these lengths AB, we have CD, we have AC, BD, and so on. And the thing is, is these numbers are a little bit, you know, strange. Like, why would they get such exact numbers? Okay, so there's a point I inside the tetrahedron such that the distances are all equal. This distance can be written in the form, basically find the distance. So the idea here is volume in two ways, essentially. So if we can find the volume, just, you know, by regular methods, we can also say that volume equals surface area, one third times surface area times times whatever that distance is, let's call it R, it's like basically kind of like an in radius. So one third times surface area times R is the volume. So if we can solve for the surface area and we can solve for the volume, we can solve for this R. So there's actually a really cool kind of trick here, which is to put a rectangular prism around it. And AB is square root 41, so we have four. So the thing is, is we can say this is 4 squared plus 5 squared the square root of that. 4 squared plus 5 squared is 41. 80, that's 4 squared plus 8 squared. 89 is 5 squared plus 8 squared. It, like, works out perfectly. So now, now what? We put this in a box. How can we find the volume of this tetrahedron? Well, we can just use, like, find the area of the, of the rectangular prism and subtract off the pieces. So total volume is 4 times side times 8, 160. Pretty simple. And now what we have to do is subtract off all these little triangular prisms here. And each of them has three legs, 4, 5, 8. And how many are there that we need to subtract off? Well, let's be careful about this. We got one here. Do we just have one? We have basically one at four of the vertices. So we have four of these. One, two, three, four. So 160 minus 4 times one third, or... There's a nice little formula, 1 6 times 4 times 5 times 8. Why 1 6, you might ask? Because, like, you know, 1 third base area times height. Base area is 5 times 8 divided by 2. So half, 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 1 third, 1 6. So just 1 6 of that. And let's see if we can make some simplifications. 8, 6, that's 3, 4. And that's about it. So we get 160 minus 300, 160 minus. 48, so 1, 6 times 4 times 5 times 8, that's 160 by 6, and 160 by 6 is 80 over 3, so we minus 320 over 3, we get 160 over 3. So now, that's, now we just use volume, so 160 over 3 equals 1 third surface area R, and then 160 equals surface area R. So now, the question is, what is the surface area? So another thing that makes this problem quite cool is that all of the faces have the exact same area. So the surface area is also quite nice. Take a look. Every single side, let me draw the CAD first, square root 41, AB square root 41. Take a look. Every single side has one square root 41, one root 89, and one root 80. And you know by, by SSS that they all must be congruent. They all have the same area. So now what you can do is you can use Heron's formula, but using Heron's formula is a bit messy because of these giant square roots. So we use an alternative method, which is basically the same thing. It's just kind of how Heron is derived one way. And we'll just use, first of all, let's draw this triangle separately. We'll use, we'll find, using law of cosines to find the angle and then half AB sine C. This is generally better when we have giant square roots in our terms. So 41 plus 80 minus 2 root 41 root 80 times cosine of, let's say this angle is theta, cosine of theta equals 89. So now we have 1 to 1 minus 89 equals 2 root 41 root 80 cosine theta. And generally when I'm doing this kind of like cosine type problems, I generally just put cos and I don't even put any angle because I'm just... I think it's a little bit faster. So 80 is 4 root 5, so that's 8, 8 root 205. Cosine theta is 121 minus 89, that's 32. So cosine theta is 4 over root 205. And now we can solve for sine theta. Sine theta will 
It's cosine squared is 16 over 205. So 205 minus 16, that's 189 over 205. Should be square, should be this, I believe. Yes, that's that's right. And that becomes uh see we have three root twenty-one over root two oh five. That's the value of sine data, so half root forty one, root eighty, and the sine is three root twenty-one over two root two oh five. And keep in mind that surface area is gonna be four times this because there's four faces of the, of the tetrahedron. So now we just get two. Oh, and then something another thing really nice is this thing, this thing, they cancel. So now we have two root 80, three root 21 over root five. And guess what? This also cancels. It seems like everything is just falling into place. So this is 24 root 21. So now we just 160 over 24 root 21. That is, well, we divide out by two or by four, we get 40. We get 20 over 3 root 21, which is 20 root 21 all over 63. And that gives an answer of 104, which is the answer for this question. So just a nice, simple problem. Or not, I wouldn't call it simple. It is simple, but tricky at the same time. But like a really cool idea of recognizing that these are the sums of squares. And then be like, huh, I can construct this kind of bounding box. It's kind of similar to how... Let's say you have like a random triangle. Uh, one area to calculate the area is to find the bounding box of the triangle. Here we just stepped it up to the next dimension. I hope you enjoyed this solution to a brilliant problem.